fourth tube um, it is July the 13th today it's Thursday um, I had recorded a video every day for I think it was eight days or a week and uh, went to edit it together and couldn't and then we have one of the videos in the middle disappeared because of the software that I was using so I'm just going to run through everything now if uh, you're coming to me for the first time then then thank you if you're returning then again thank you um, and I hope you enjoy the video right I had said last time that I was going to go through all of my whips and uh, do one every two days work on a project for two days and then then go on to the next one um, I've sort of stuck to that so I will show you what I was working on um, the first thing that I worked on was the um, mystery sampler by Papillon Creations and you've seen this before there we go this was put out in I don't remember the name of the magazine, oh goodness. Nope, but I've mentioned it before. It's in my first video, so um, you can go and um, check that out. So what I did was, I did, I got six motifs done in two days. I got four done in one day and then two done in the next because I just, I was busy that day. So I got this done. And I got the peacock, fancy pants peacock. I got the little flower motif done. I got that done, which is partial diamond eyelets. I got D done and I got this. Now, you can't see that. These are um, partial road stitches, but this is um, a double back stitch. Um, no double back stitch where it's back stitch but doubled but you it's you double back on yourself um unfortunately because this isn't such a dark color it just looks like cross stitch um it was an interesting stitch to do and not one i've actually done before but I, you know I, I don't think that it shows up at all it just looks like cross stitch um this is on 28 count a uh, jubilan i think or it's just even weave, it's, it's, it's antique white even weave. Um, and I'm using the, the DMC threads. There is a silk pack available for this, but I don't, I don't think it's available anymore. So I'm just using the suggested DMCs. There's Mr. No Butt Snail down there. I really enjoyed working on this. I was sorry to put it down after the two days. Um, I'm getting a bit worried that I'm gonna run out of fabric actually um but we'll see perhaps you can um give me some advice actually so i'm oh, sorry my legs not very good uh, there we go i don't like the white background i really don't like the white background so what I was thinking is that I will tea dye it after I've stitched it. Um, not something I've done before. So if somebody could tell me how that goes, or um, if you would recommend it, or if you would not recommend it, um, then <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> then that would be really useful. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to put that away. The next thing I picked up. I thought, well, I'll work on the thing that I don't want to work on, basically, and get it out of the way. And I was right, I did not want to work on this. I, I'm not going to say that I hated every second of it, but it was a chore. I did not enjoy it. Um, this is the We Are All Mad Here, the Scornu by Clouds Factory. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a lovely little pattern, it's just not quite to my normal taste. I don't know why I started it, um, but you know, there we go. It's nearly done, so I'm not going to abandon it now. 
So this is Alice, the White Rabbit, the Mad Hatter and the start of the Cheshire Cat. So I did the Mad Hatter, these two, Teapot and Teacup and this Cheshire Cat and that is all I got done in two days because it was a chore. Um, I've obviously got the other side of this to do. I mean I've just got, on this side, I've just got him to finish off and there's a dormice and a teacup there which is a little tiny thing and obviously the, the stitcher And um, The other side is um, this motif and then there's some circles around, around the outside so it's not that complicated. Um, this is stitched on a Crafty Kitten fabric. Um, it was her fabric of the month in February last year. Um, it was a sort of Valentine's fabric. Now, I, I don't know the name of it, but it's a um, 32 count linen, which is my um, preference. I prefer to work on prefer to work on linen. Um, so there we go. I will, you know, get back to it at some point. I was tempted to keep it out for another day to see if I could finish it, but honestly, it, it was getting to the point where there was no stitching because I didn't, I was no enjoying it and I'd already done two days so um, I just, you know, put it to the side. There's more than a day's work left to do anyway so. Um, the next thing I picked up I really, really enjoyed. Um, I will show you the pattern which is here. Yeah. This is a Mirabilia, this is Damask Roses, and this is Mirabilia number one actually, sorry for the glare. There are no beads in this, there are no water lilies in this, it's simply DMC. Um, I love the colours. I like the contrast of this um, mustard yellow chartreuse colour and that sort of teal. It's really nice. Um, I'm stitching this, I believe, on the cold for a fabric. It's 32 count um, raw linen, I think, or natural linen. I think it's a raw linen. Um, and I had to get a fat half because it's slightly too big for a fat quarter. Um, so I had already done the border, this one stitch border which is quite annoying because it's 10 stitches and then change colour and there's plenty of threads in it as well and it's bright and it's not the most exciting thing and there's miles and miles and miles of fabric. This is the um, witch out linen, the permanent one, so it's that um, quite stiff fabric which actually I don't mind working on at all. Um, I had done this. Um, I'd just started this part, um, but I got mm, the majority of this this done um, in the two days, and I loved working on this. I got a good eight or ten hours of stitching in on the Sunday, um, which was great. So I actually carried it over for a day, just for an hour or so to fill in. I had a one colour to fill in here. So I thought that I would just fill that in and finish that off. Um, again, I love the colours on this. They're so nice together and that teal green is one of my favourite colours. I also like mustard yellow. Um, so, um, it's slightly disturbing how much blank fabric I've got left. But I made good progress and I'm, I'm very pleased with it. So. I think it looks good on that cold four fabric actually. Usually with Mirabilia's I don't use a cold four fabric, but that, that's quite nice. Right, um, okay. So I really enjoyed working on that Mirabilia, so I pulled out another Mirabilia. And this is where I've fallen down because I've been working on this for three days now and I do not want to put this away. So I might actually give it another day. Um, you will have seen this before. This is red. 
I fell in love with this the first time I saw it. That dress just is a, absolutely amazing. It really appeals to me. The patterning, the colours, it's just, it's lovely. And she's quite a big lady, so I'm trying to think what way up it goes that way. There we go. Mm, there we go, that's it. So, I got, I had this done and that done there, so I've got these all done in the last, as I say, three days. I love working on this. It's just great. This in here was a bit slow going. Um, this is much quicker because it's big blocks of colour. Um, and this is sort of down her waists up here. But that's really, really nice. Um, I'm not sure if it works on the fabric, but you know, it's on that now. I'm never quite sure about hand dyed fabric. My um, imagination is not necessarily good enough to, I can't picture, I don't have the experience to picture what it's going to look like on the hand dyed fabric. I think that's okay. This is my only piece of picture, this plus fabric, and it is Da Vinci and it's 32 count Belfast. I got this fabric for something else. I ordered it from the States and um, it does work actually. I ordered it from the States. It was originally meant for Florentina, which is another Mirabilia pattern. And I put the, the floss for Florentina on it and it just didn't it didn't work. There was a colour which was so close to this it would just have disappeared and it just it didn't look right to me so I repurposed it for this and I've actually got another piece of fabric for Florentina. She's actually kitted up. So I will start that at some point. I've got three Mirabilias on the go at the moment. Now I'm not going to say I'm not going to start another one, but I'd like to get significant progress, if not finish, you know, at least one of them before I start another. I've got, at a guess, 40 Mirabilia patterns. If you ever want me to, to run through them and show them off, then, then let me know. I've got a big binder full of them. Um, some are in better condition than others because you generally buy them off eBay. Um, my One of my saved searches on eBay is Mirabilia. When I started buying Mirabilia patterns on eBay, they were costing me... I was getting them for maybe three pounds, four pounds. I wouldn't pay more than five pounds for one on eBay. Um, now you're lucky if you can get them cheaper than um, you can buy them for in the shop which is crazy. I used to own, many years ago, I used to own garden verses. I had the first, I had a, a few Mirabilia patterns and I got rid of them when I moved country. I had Sleeping Beauty garden verses and I had Old Queens and maybe one or two others. Now, that garden verses pattern is now going for 50 or 60 pounds on eBay and that's crazy to me. Um, I know that people want to make money off their patterns but you know I don't um, I'm slightly annoyed by that to be honest uh, you know it is just a cross stitch pattern and I don't think that um, people should be paying you know I've seen them before in there for £100, which is, I know that's out of print, but still it's crazy. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, if you put it on eBay for £10 or something, if it's out of print, you know, fine. And people bid it up to £100, but when the starting bid is, you know, £70 or £80, then I think it's a bit nuts. 
Now, the first one that I showed you, Damask Roses, is actually out of print, but it's readily available because it's the first one. It's been around for so long and it only went out of print last year. What else do I have to show you? Hmm. Oh, okay. So, I found yesterday, quite by accident, I was showing a friend some old photographs, which I've got stuffed in a plastic bag. And I came across one of the first crow stitches that I ever done. And it is a bit tatty. This is 20 years old at least. I did this when I was a teenager, maybe 18 or 19, I think. I think. Um, anyway, it's very old and I've not seen it for years and years. It was to say it was rammed in a bag. Um, this is Boris. And I think Boris is really cool and I should put him in a little frame. He was in a frame at one point and I don't know what happened. Um, as I say, I think we sort of moved country. I don't know why there's a big chunk missing out the bottom of the fabric, but there's still enough to frame him. But he needs a wash and he needs pressed and he needs put in a frame. So I'm going to do that. These were... And I had to look this up. I remembered that they were called squirkles as in circle square so and there was animals and there was also people I wasn't terribly keen on the people but I did like boars and there was a cow or a spider as well from memory as I'm saying this was you know 20 years ago so um and this is the only kit I've ever stitched from looking it up these were by a designer called Peter Underhill I'm not sure whether you can still buy them or not, but uh, yeah, there we go. I've got a feeling I ordered it from Cross Stitch magazine, probably Cross Stitch Gold, but I may have found it in a shop. I honestly don't remember. Very, right, he is quite cool. It's one of the smallest projects I've ever done. I didn't know how long it took. My stitches are. Oh, that's interesting. My stitches have changed direction. My top stitch and bottom stitch have swapped. Assuming that I stitched it the right way up and didn't rotate it 90 degrees, I don't see why I would have done. Ha, ah, that's funny. They are all going in the same direction, but they're all the opposite of what I do now. That's that's weird. <laughs> um, I usually do my first stitch from bottom, left to top right, and then so the top stitch from top left to bottom right, or the other way around, sorry. But uh, yeah, that's that's weird. I have some haul. I have ship that I shouldn't have bought because I could not really afford it. But I was depressed and needed a fix and ended up buying stuff. Right, my partner's away. He's back tomorrow. I've been on my own for a week now, nearly. He's in America and he was out every day, like the, day, the week before that anyway. So pretty much two weeks actually I've been stuck on my own. I bought two weeks dye works threads. Pelican Grey, and this is for this pattern, which I already had. Past and present by Rose Hill Manor, and this is for the lettering. That's showing up pretty accurately as far as I can. Hey, that's quite nice. Um, it's a very greeny grey. And there we go. Um, I got. Ba, ba, ba. Dutch Beauty had come in and I got an email to say that it had come in so I went ahead and got that. Oh, there are a couple of people stitching this at the moment so um, Cozy Egg, Michelle from Cozy Egg and <coughs> excuse me, Emily from Eclectic Possessions are stitching this at the moment and I'm sure there are other people. This is a huge project. Um, 
this was stitched in 1790 originally. This is a reproduction sampler and it's created by Perman of Copenhagen who, who obviously do the, the um, fabric for the Meravillias as well. Uh, this was originally stitched by a 13 year old girl and I think it's funny that a lot of these samplers, the reproduction samplers, you know, they're stitched by children. And, you know, we now see it as, as an adult pastime, stitching samplers and reproduction samplers and, and co-stitching. But, you know, they were doing it as children um, to learn alphabets and, you know, to gain the skills that they needed to work. Um, in domestic service or whatever they were going into because you know these motifs were all going to be stitched onto household linen and, and whatever else uh, there's another fancy peacock fancy pants peacock down here but this is lovely and i will get to it at some point um all these samplers I've got coming in, I, I don't know whether I mentioned this in my last video, I've recorded like half a dozen videos between now and then and now and they've no, they've just disappeared mainly, so um, I need the 18 miles of, of linen at this point to stitch all these samplers on. My, I do have a small fabric stash but it's all hand dyed stuff. Um, and it's all crazy colours because that's what I ended up with because that was my taste at the time um, but not suitable for great for memorabilias and these sorts of things in lavender and lace but um, no great for stitching reproduction samplers on because you know who wants to stitch their, their reproduction sampler on purple and lime green linen it's, it's not going to work so I need a significant amount of, of linen at this point um, and that's what I don't have so that's what's stopping me so um, I need to work out what I'm going to do with that because actually the things that I've got are demanding different counts I need some 40 count, I need some 38 count, I need some 28 count, I need some 32 count apparently and they're all either a metre or you know half a metre they're not small they're not small pieces and that gets quite expensive in linen the other thing I got I bought on impulse because I don't know I honestly don't know why I bought this I do like it I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to stitch it or not um, I think it's quite fun um, this is my first ink circles pattern and this is Get Kraken. I ordered these from Arts and Designs. And now I'm not sure whether I showed my other stuff or not. I think that I did. I'll double check and if I didn't I'll show it next time I go um, a couple of Rose Hill Manor ones I go autumn quake sorry summer quakers and um, that one that I just showed and I go gone it's gone and I go no, it's gone. <laughs> I got Northern Expressions Needleworks, um, no quite white work sampler, hand. Some other bloody thing that I can't remember. Anyway, I'll, I'll have a look at the last video and if I didn't show them, then um, I will show them next time. Because I've recorded since then and the videos have not been uploaded because I'm balls it up. Um, I don't remember in which which video I showed this. So yes, that's Get Cracking by Ink Circles. It's charted for Gloriana Silk. Um, 
I'm not sure whether I would want to put the expense of Gloria and Silk into this, but we'll see. I might do. It is cool. The one that I actually want that's like that is um, the Alien Schoolgirl Summer. I think that's really, really cool, but it's unfortunately it's out of print. And I can't seem to find it. Um, what else have I got to show? Nothing, really. Um, apart from Martin. I have mentioned this in a previous video. My son, Mido, failed to demand with as a project for school. And he's now home. And this is Martin. And Martin is so cool. How cool is Martin? There you go. He was in the exhibition evening, so at school, so he was a great success. Martin. My son has um, his production evening, year six production this evening. They've been practicing for a month now. Uh, and he, it's Peter Pan, and he is known speaking pirate number three, which is what he wanted. Fine. You could either go for a large speaking part, or a small speaking part, or a small non speaking part, and he wanted a small non speaking part. So he is non speaking part number three. Uh, this is this evening. So I'm looking forward to that. And my plan being, you know, the crazy embarrassing parent that I am, I've got a pirate dress. Um, I say it's a pirate dress, it's actually a 50s tea dress in skull and crossbones fabric. It's a big um, sort of boutique, it's a boutique handmade dress and I love that dress. Um, it's got a circle skirt so I mean when worn with a with an underskirt it's actually quite large and it's a halter neck and it's all boned so it's a really really nice dress. But I am going to wear my pirate dress this evening and possibly a pirate hat, which I have, and I've got some pirate jewellery as well. So I'm going to stand at the back and shout yar a lot and just be really, really embarrassing because that's how I roll. He says that's fine. He doesn't, I mean, he doesn't mind. Uh, I think I said before that he's on the autistic spectrum. He's very high functioning. He has Asperger's, um, but you know, he's got no shame. It just doesn't have any, so that, you know, me being embarrassing doesn't actually embarrass him. He thinks it's quite funny, actually. Right, I am going to get on. I've got a metric fuck ton of housework to do because my partner's home tomorrow morning. He's flying overnight from Washington. And I've not done anything for several days because I've been sitting on my arse and cross-stitching and listening to audiobooks and just, you know, generally chilling out. Um, so, bumming around. I have been bumming around. I'm going to go and get something to eat and then I'm going to vacuum the entire house um, and then we'll see how we go from there. I don't know what I'm going to work on next. I've got a list of whips, which I'm just, you know, pulling stuff. There's stuff that I don't want to work on. There really is. You know, you've always got that project. and oh, I don't know, maybe that's just me. You've always got a project or two. I've always got a project or two, which is there is stuff to lay that you've not, has not seen the light of day for a year. And the thought of bringing it out and working on it is... Yeah, but the two day time limit is helpful. I think that I should give everything two days and then if I really, really hate stitching on it, then I'm just gonna, you know, put it away and forget about it or just abandon it. Because who's got the time to spend months stitching on something that they don't want to be working on? Anyway, I am going to bugger off and do what I need to do. Um, Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Um, feel free to leave comments. Comments, I, I really enjoy your comments. Um, 
feel free to ask any questions. If there's anything you want to see, like my Lurabilia patterns, then, then just ask and I will show those. And um, let me know what you think about me just, you know, tea dyeing that um, sampler once it's stitched up. Okay, bye guys, I will see you later.